gold. Our 18-hole Niklaus design, award-winning golf course and clubhouse will leave you green with envy. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City way. Good afternoon, I see you've made it just in time to join us again for Real Talk on SABC3 where the stage is yours. Going our separate ways, it's sometimes it's called splitsville or conscious uncoupling. Whatever you choose to call it, divorce is more often than not a disruptor in our lives that leads to a lot of emotions and potentially resulting in heartbreak for all involved. But there is a way to go through the process and come out of it on the other side unscathed. Later in the show, clinical psychologist Louise Bolton will answer some questions and more but before that let's start with the man and woman who are putting a comedic spin on divorce we all know him as the candid stand-up comedian whose performances often leaves our mouths wide open from shock but some of us weren't prepared for the day he took to instagram to announce that his 11-year marriage with his wife lucille was coming to an end not only that he told us that he, he would soon be embarking on a divorce comedy tour this November. He is stand-up comedian, actor, MC, and producer, the outrageous Trevor Gumi is on Real Talk. He has a little taste of his madness when he's on stage. Yeah. Mr. Trevor Gumi! Oh, hello. What a warm welcome. Thank you so much, guys. That's, it means so much to me. It's difficult being named Trevor when that other Trevor is in town. <laughs> when the MC introduces, like, ladies and gentlemen, go wild, go crazy for Trevor. Then girls are taking off their bras and panties, throwing them on stage. Then he says, Gumbi. <laughs> girls are coming up here on stage. In <laughs> Put it, please, man. <laughs> okay, right now he is the Trevor we want to see. Okay, hello there, Mr. Tr Come on, Mr. Tr Mr. Trevor Kumbi, how's it? Very good, thank you. Very good. I must remind you that you were our first guest ever, ever Great. on Real Talk, ever. That's amazing. So this is my second time on your beautiful couch. Third time we can swap seats. Can we? Yes. Can we? It's a deal. We're shaking. It's a deal. We're, shaking. We're shaking on it. We're Nicolada, shaking. And then now conduct everything. Okay. So now yeah. listen, I, I watched you say something. <laughs> oh, thank you. I didn't, even, <laughs> I didn't even have to ask you. Because oh, I was going to ask you later when we became like comfortable. But thank you for taking No, but it's for the outfit. Yeah, well, oh, oh, oh. People must see. Yeah, well, it's the swag. I, I'm trying to attract a younger audience. Oh, I thought you said younger wives. Because you know, <laughs> we know what's happening there. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. Somebody once asked you, uh, how long have you been a comedian? And you said, possibly all my life. Yep. So you've been funny all your life. Uh, I, I feel I had to be funny, Escala, because uh, I, I got bullied a lot. I was a fat, chubby kid, and I got bullied a lot. And I, I, I find that uh, being the funny guy, the, the bigger guys wouldn't pick on you as much. You know? Because they enjoyed your company. Yeah. I, so that's a coping mm. mechanism that you had. I think so, yeah. And then you took it throughout your whole life, because yeah. you've openly said that it, when you went to rehab, they told you. Oh, yes. You may not make jokes because you cope mm. by making fun of things. Yeah. And that was a very difficult time for me. Um, uh, not just being in rehab, but uh, uh, having that mechanism taken away from me. Yeah. I didn't know how to deal with situations. Um, because when I'm faced with a certain kind of feeling that um, I, I used to have the drugs take away, uh. I, uh, and I didn't have that crutch of the drugs anymore. I was like, oh, let me try at least be funny mm. in this situation and divert how I really feel, mm. you know? But then I learned how to sit in my pain and uh, sit through it. Mm. Yeah, that's what um, the first rehab instilled in me, to, to sit through the pain and deal with it. Mm. Yeah. So when you're doing something like the divorce tour, because divorce is a painful process, we, regardless of which way you look at right. it. You know, regardless of how much you've fallen out of love and you guys have made peace with the fact that you're not going to be together. Mm -hmm. 
what's wh where is the comedy fitting in now? Is it is it the coping mechanism coming back again, mm. or is it you having dealt with the pain properly that now you're able to make fun of it? It's uh, looking on the bright side of things. Okay, uh, we were together for what 16 years, married for 11. Um, out of all that time, there's very good memories. There's uh, very good things that happened, mm. and the few things that um, fermented were and were not dealt with is what broke us up. So there's more good than there is bad. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard about the 80-20 rule kind yes. of thing, you know? Yeah. So that, you know, we, we had great times, but they came to an end. Why did they come to an end? Because of certain things. Mm. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, mm. if you're trying to save it, do like that. Mm. If you want out, do like I did. So do you find that there were moments in your marriage where Leave the drugs alone. Mm -hmm. Leave the leave the jokes alone. Yeah, there were moments in your marriage where you weren't emotionally feeling everything because you're saving all of that 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 outlet, that energy, that emotion for mm. stage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what Lucille, my ex, will, will will tell you is that I wasn't intimate enough, and intimacy is not a, a sexual thing. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, holding hands. Uh, Conversation, um, just talking that about text, yourself. Uh, did did you did you eat today? Those uh. kind of things, you know. Uh, I, I think I just became uh, her roommate. Oh, you know? so that's one thing that she complained about. Do you know how many wives feel like that? Really? Yes. A lot. I actually have a very good friend of mine who's married, and she says, "I feel like my husband is my housemate." And, you know, we, we, we're walking into the same house and we're speaking past each other. So we're not fighting. And this is the thing. Yeah. So people think in order to divorce, you need to be fighting. You need to be fighting, yeah. You, 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 you lose the spark. We started working together. So it's going to be productions. We live in the same house. We mm. wake up, breakfast, uh, laptops open, uh, working. If there's um, a meeting, we will have lunch at that meeting. Mm. And we come back and it's late at night. So it's not a lack of time thing. No, no. You come back at night and you you haven't finished a document, so mm. your laptop's in bed now. You know, you're always there. And you're doing together. fine financially. You know what I mean. You know, because fin a financial burden can lead to divorce, but mm. you're doing fine there. And so then all of a sudden, you, you are friends now. You know, and then when you when you go away from a room for like, hey, just met this girl. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Wait, I had a big jam. Oh, had it. <laughs> you know, so, so the lines get blurred, uh, you know, because you can be with the person for a very long time and uh, you can be happy as uh, friends and you forget to work on the relationship, uh, you know. Okay, so if her main, well, not main thing, she'll tell us what her main thing was. Yeah, sure. But one of them is the fact that you weren't intimate enough. What was hurting you? What, what were you on the other end saying, well, you are not this? Uh, w with me, what I'm discovering now is um, uh, I'm not fully grown, not in a physical way, mm. but my emotions, I, 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 I battle to deal with them and I, I, and I battle to deal with situations because I haven't healed from, from um, I'm going to say from not having a father figure mm. that has made situations in my life currently, mm. situations that shouldn't bother a normal guy mm. have emasculated me in a very big way. Like? The smallest thing, like um, you'd be driving and um, your wife in the passenger seat and she says, that's a red light. Mm. And then it's like, I saw there's a red light, you know? But mm. otherwise you could be like, oh, ish, thank it's, you. Yeah. You know, a normal reaction. So but then to what does that like, do? It's, it's because, you know, you 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 with this person the whole time, and you want to ma be made feel like a man. And I didn't know what to feel like a man is supposed to be. Mm. And that's it's not an outside and process. I, yeah, and I don't. And I think it's a big problem in South Africa with South African men. Uh. We don't know what it is to be a man. And then you you find your physical do dominance yeah. as yeah, saying you don't die, man. Yeah, which isn't the true reflection. You know, mm. I w I went on um uh, through our marriage counselor who was not good, because look. <laughs> now look. <laughs> that marriage counselor, there's no, there's no refund. It's like, I, sh I tried. But you didn't do your job, you tried lunch. And and please invite them to the, to the comedy tour <laughs> and, and make them sit in front. And we must pay for <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. 
Fantastic. <laughs> so anyway, from that, I was introduced to uh, my therapist. Yeah. And my therapist found that, you know, from our conversations, found that I'm, I'm lacking in my sense of being a mm. man, and I don't know what being a man is. Mm. And he suggested a camp called the Mankind Project, which mm. I went to, you know. And it's uh, men from all walks of life, so, um, so from security guards to CEOs, white, black, colored, Indian, Japanese, everything, okay? And we're away in the bush, and we deal with our emotions. I've never seen a titan of industry, so I can't mm. mention names, yeah, but a titan of industry in the fetal position around a campfire, crying their eyes out, and all of us were just like around, just like hugging, man hugs, you know? And that will show you about society today because men are bottling up their emotions. They don't know how to deal with it. And when you bottle something up, what happens? It mm. bottlenecks and it explodes. It boils, it boils, it boils. And Absolutely. Mm. Thank you for that. Listen, mm. uh, if you have questions for Trevor over here, we're asking, we're giving you rather a chance uh, to ask. He will answer you right now. Send us a voice note to the WhatsApp line that you see on the screen. Keep your voice notes, please, 20 seconds. Can't come and give us a long eulogy here. Come on, we're only here until six. Uh, come back after the break. More with Trevor Gumby. I don't think black girls, you realize when we say variety, what we need, okay? We need you to stop coming to the clubs carrying those massive handbags. I call it the Funin daughter bag. That's a, I want a man bag. Because in that is a whole sleepover kit, okay? There's a dress, there are high heels, there's an extra weave, there's everything. They've also got something called pumps, okay? Gentlemen, women wear high heels all the time. When they're not in front of us, they put on something called pumps. It is best described as, it looks like a secret sock with a soul. That's, that's what it is. Girl, black girls, stop doing unsexy stuff when you come to my house, okay? Stop wearing your old Garfield nightdress. It's not cool, okay? And I do not need to see you take your bra off without you taking what you're wearing on top off first. What is this move? What the hell is that? Uh, and then you pull it up from here. When they pull it up from here, Zambak is on the floor. The seven run. Stop it, man. <laughs> I am so guilty of the bra move. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you don't even wait to get out the car, no? <laughs> You're doing it in traffic. You know how many times I've seen it in traffic? You think, why? Why Kumula people Do you know what it is? I always what? say. I always say it's because I went to boarding school, so you like you we change. I know it's an excuse, but it's not true, and now I know it. Trevor, thank you. I shall now stop it. Yeah, please. I shall now stop please. it. I shall it, think of it like, like strippers do. It, it's it's a dance. It's uh, like okay. it's it's supposed to be enticing. Uh, you, you take off the kafif, even if it's kafif or some kind of. Okay. You need to see the layers coming off. Okay. It's, like, it's like a, it's a thing for you guys. Peel it's like a process. It, yeah. Peel it. Oh. It's like an onion. Just okay. peel it. Like, nah, nah, nah. You don't just get to the core of the oh, apple. Uh, you have to. Now, how you are sends us everywhere now. <laughs> but wait, when you do you're comedy, fully when you do comedy like that, because unless your wife is doing the bra thing, yeah. where would you have seen her do that? Yeah? Where would you have seen a woman Hello? do that? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I was I was raised. Um, by a single mother with sisters only. Uh, yeah. So that's your memory. It's yeah, yeah, sure. Memory about from yeah, muscle memory. Mm. I was a moon party. Like, what the mm. now? Okay, no, I'm just. We're gonna get to that just now. You said in one interview that <laughs> the reason you went to rehab is because you were on the verge of losing your family. Oh yeah. All Let's right. Get serious again. Okay. No, we're not serious. But yeah. Actually, because I want to compare the two now. Sure. So uh, I went to rehab because I was on the verge of losing my family. So you went and you mm -hmm. didn't lose your family, right? And things were right. Mm -hmm. When people speak divorce, there is a, 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 a thought process that makes one think that that's losing your family again. Oh, right? yeah, sure. So what's the difference now? Uh, the difference now is that um, I'm, I'm actually not losing my family. This is keeping my family. Uh -huh. This is the only way that I can keep uh, a relationship with my ex and a relationship with my kids. Uh -huh. Because if that toxic relationship had carried on, 
uh, and we at our throats all the time in mm. front of my kids. My kids would have turned their back on me, you know? Because uh, now they're watching you mistreat their mother. You know what I mean? So I think our kids are much happier with happy parents. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Let so, that sink in. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. So how did you tell them that you guys are getting divorced? It was a, it was a, a process. It was a process of... Uh, getting counseling for them as well and uh, speaking about it with our marriage counselor who still doesn't give any change or refunds because <laughs> she failed at her job grand grand Did admittedly so she failed at her job Kalupi, it's not more close your two-year guarantee store yeah but still <laughs> would make up bias now she was she was a biased lesbian woman I, I, I she was on you. Lucille's side all the time all the time okay but I mean what what uh -uh, I mean, don't do that. Did you ever cheat on your wife? Yeah. Uh, one night stands or repeatedly, like, did you have other girlfriends that were there? Good morning, baby. Good night, baby. Or was it just like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, next person? Uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, next person. Mm. But there was a time when there was uh, two of those that... Uh, that stuck around. That, uh, very, yeah, very regrettable because uh, it takes a lot out of you as a person, mm -hmm. out of your wallet, and out of your marriage, because now you've got to be concentrating on somebody else. Mm -hmm. Somebody else wants good night texts. Mm -hmm. Somebody else. Did they wants know you were married? Text. Yeah. Do you f did you ever feel like they were competing with your wife? Because I mean, growing up, like when I'd listen to men speak, they yeah. would say things like, you know, a mistress must know her place. A mistress must never compete with your wife. A mistress nah, must Joanne. know. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. That was in Jalen. I honestly think the sexiest thing for some women is seeing that wedding ring. Yeah. Because they know who die. It's a challenge. No, nah, not even that. I'm going to get what I want from him, and then he's not going to bother me absolutely because he needs to, I need to make care for you. Uh, he needs to be at home at certain time. He needs to be eating. Me, I see him from Thursday to Sunday, kind uh -huh, of vibe, you know? Uh -huh. So you get the whole relationship, but you don't get the, the admin. Did you ever, like, take them out in public, like take them to a comedy club or... You know, I mean, I know Dirty Weekends away, where you guys use separate entrances. Yeah. But <laughs> How do you know so, so much, Kata <laughs> now, Eddie? Uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> I'm closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, very, very true. But in, in those instances, because um, a lot of people know us, uh, know my ex and I, yeah. it, it, it would be a thing of not know your place, but even uh, in timing, you uh, know? I'm a you know? So, and if, did she ever find out and you have to beg for forgiveness? Wait, let me ask you like this. When were you were begging for forgiveness, what were you promising? Sure. The world. Because you must understand at that time I was in full on uh, addiction mm. and I was using a lot. And um, as a recovering addict, well, as an addict, you, you are quite manipulative. Mm. So. Mm. I promised the world, I mm. promised everything that that change and blah, blah, blah. But you know when you, when you uh, promise somebody change and when you apologize to somebody mm. and say that you will change, mm. that person doesn't need to take that apology because the only way you can display that you have changed is through behavior. Through behavior. Mm. And that's a, that's a process which I failed at, mm. you know? Okay, speaking of failing, and you always say, my marriage counselor failed, my marriage counselor <laughs> failed. She <laughs> did, man, yo. <laughs> uh, going into counseling. I think she actually wanted to see Yes. Really? Mm. Do you know what you're doing? Are you doing the thing where all gay people just like anyone? They don't necessarily have a type. No, I didn't say that. Oh. You, <laughs> that's what you're doing now. <laughs> Fine, sorry. Okay, all right. Um, what was it? Where was I? Da, 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 da. Yes, when you were going into counseling. Yeah. Were you going in to please Lucille? Yeah, mm, if I remember well, it was one of her demands that mm. if we're going to work on this marriage, we have to get counseling. Mm. Was her idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. And why are you, mm -hmm, what's so telling about that? No, because I find with counseling now, if, even like relationships where they're physically abusive, right? Uh -huh. And then we discover, okay, let's say you and I are dating and you've been physically abusive to uh -huh. me. And then I'm like, I'm leaving because I'm tired of you hitting me. And to make me stay, 
one of the things they'll promise me is that you go to anger management and we'll go to counseling. Now, mm. you're not necessarily going to counseling because you want to grow, yeah. not change, grow, yeah. right? Because you don't want, because I love you, so I don't mm. want you to change. I want you to grow up, right? Yeah. Because that, that is kid behavior that you think that everything can be solved by like fighting. Mm. It's we're three years old, right? So you promise me that you'll go for counseling with me and you'll promise me that you're going to anger management. But mm. those are not things that you want to do. Yeah. So when you were going into counseling, what is it that you actually wanted to do? Were you, were you sure of a divorce then? No, I was manipulating the situation to uh, go with what I want. Which is what you wanted was a wife at home and be able to do anything yeah. you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would have gotten me off the hook. Mm. You know? Like, okay, I said we can go to counseling. What well, must I change now? I need the process. So and another question that is always asked, and I mean, I, I seem to know a lot about what I'm talking about because I have you lots do. of girlfriends, I know, right? Is why don't you just leave me? Why do you want to keep me at home? It's that, uh, it's that, uh, uh, and I'm the rich kid with the ball. <laughs> and then I d I'm either not playing anymore or I'm bored or whatever. Or you're losing. But, or I'm losing. Then yeah. I say, let the ball alarm. You know, yeah. and you take your ball and you go home with it. It's that, it's that power trip, I, mm. I guess. You know, and it's it's also because of uh, my lack of understanding what it is to be a man. You know, mm. so I was like, no, this is not how a man is treated. Uh, you know, I am supposed to be the man. Mm. You must bring me food on your knees, kind of thing. Mm. You know, mm. and I'm not perfect yet. I'm still working on myself. Uh -huh. The best thing I think right now is that I understand what's wrong with me. Oh. And I can't change over, overnight. Mm. You know, but at I least you know. Yeah, I know. At least you know. I know. Say no who's cool, Zaji, you know, when something happens and then I'm like, ah, um, yeah. That's you being that guy yeah, again. Bonage. Yeah, you are so refreshing. I don't think you understand. Uh, I know their voice notes coming, but the thing is, I'm being so selfish right now, and I'm hogging him. But after the break, the lady in charge is cracking the whip, Lucille Gumbi. She joins us next, and then I promise you, I'll come with your with your voice of voiceovers, voice notes. That's what I want to say. Stay with Real Talk. I know, like they're telling. Describe your mom in one word. How lazy. Humble. Did you just say lazy? Yes. Yeah. He oh, said wow. Lazy. <laughs> A voice. Describe your dad in one word. Jody. Lazy. Ooh. Thank you. I would like Such to a... concentrate on what Jody said. Jody said I'm cool. Jamie said you lazy. All these things you thought about yourself, hey? <laughs> And welcome back. That was a trip down memory lane, which serves as a reminder of much happier times from the reality TV show, The Goombies. Trevor and Lucille Goombie shock fans when they announced they split after 11 years. Uh, they're here to take us through their divorce process. And now it's led to a divorce tour. Want to know? <laughs> Dude, when that thing dropped, I was like, okay. And then it was the picture of you guys. And then it was like, <laughs> you've been so dramatic. Look at you. <laughs> I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to talk to her. <laughs> Take her away, please. <laughs> and then you guys drop the divorce tour. I promise you, people are lying to you if they're not saying that our WhatsApp groups were going insane. Yes. <laughs> oh, for like, real? We were like, what are they doing? My WhatsApp was just like, I mean, like, oh gosh, no, not today. Let me just switch it off for now. But who do you speak to before you, like, like maybe your mom, your dad, your cousins, your priests? Somebody you need to warn before that comes out because you don't want people calling you be like, how? Oh, oh, see, wait. I want my family, I want my close friends. It's the people that matter. Okay, so in your experience, what led to the divorce? I think uh, one of the things is that we, we got married very young, uh. right? I was 22, he was 24, no, 26. Um, and I just 25. don't think we knew each other well in, enough, no, yeah. as individuals, not together, because we were together about five years before we got married. Yeah. We, I knew what he was pretty much about, but I think we didn't know ourselves. Yeah. We, like, I mean, we're both still in a process of learning about ourselves, discovering, yeah. like Trevor said just now, about himself. I, I'm there as well, you know? So I just think that in the process of me um, discovering myself yeah. in my later stage of my life, which is over the past probably two to three years, there were many disconnects mm -hmm. and uh, things that were happening and you know we just got to a point where um, 
uh, it's exactly, you know, as Trevor said, we were happier for our kids apart. Mm -hmm. And it was becoming a point where we were, you know, the kids were starting to see things happen. And we didn't want our boys, especially because boys are so fragile, we didn't want mm. them scarred from their childhood for the rest of their lives trying to recover from that. Mm. So we just decided that, you know what? I mean, we still work together. That was one thing in our entire uh, marriage that we did well was work together. So, you know, we decided that's what works for us. So let's just continue with it. So when, when do the, like, because you guys were on holidays together, were you not? It was like <laughs> yeah. a really extravagant trip. Like, <laughs> it was like a five-week holiday, first class everywhere. Now, are things still fine there, or is it for the gram? Like, for Instagram, like... Um, well, we don't do family vacations anymore. I mean, the last vacation, uh, he um, Trevor went alone with the boys. We, we, we noticed. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, we don't, that's one thing that we miss uh, doing as a family is going mm. on vacations together, but he still uh, does his dad uh, vacations. But when you took that big one, were things breaking apart then? No. Or things were or still happening? Or maybe it was then? happening, but it wasn't on the surface because I, I do believe that marriages don't just fall apart, just uh. like that. So there is a gradual process. Yes, it but it was not one where it was on the surface and we knew that now we, you know, mm. we were happy. We were communicating, and yeah, then which was, it which literally was, happened when we came when we came back from holiday. I think yeah, two months later. Yeah, which, then which one was that again? The last one. Um, I Sa think that was Thailand, Thailand, Dubai, uh, Philippines. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that one. I I remember uh, coming back from that, and in my mind, I was like, I spent the, uh, every day of the last five weeks with this person, and she gets grumpy every time I want to get go out with my friends mm. you know, and then she started calling my friends too young and too immature and blah 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 and that just kind of made me angry and i, I remember saying um, to myself mm. that i've spent yeah. every day with you just give me is give that me not a, a trust issue because i wouldn't mind you getting out of my sight if i knew you weren't gonna go and be with another woman damn like that marriage counseling all over <laughs> Do me like I, think, that, I, I mean, the main thing, uh, he, he used to say that, like, dude, I'm in this house all the time, every day. Are you in this house, present and active, or is the dead body Just your the, body, yeah. That's the difference, is that mm. he, I, I felt he didn't understand the differences. Are you here? Mm. You are physically here, mentally, you are Or there. like you're here, but you're on your phone. There you we know? go. You know? Okay, but we're both guilty of that, to be honest. Okay. But, uh, you know, that was my constant issue, is that you, when you are here, you are mm. not actually here, and a lot of the time you're not here. What's the most hurtful thing you've ever had to forgive him for doing? Um, hmm. Cheating's not the most hurtful. Mm. Mm. It's, I, understand, I can understand I that. just, um, I think the lack of respect that uh, it literally deteriorated as time went, and for me, mm. I felt that, you know, that that was one of the things that I felt that, you know, as the mother of your kids mm. and the history that we've had, that should have always remained intact, regardless of what things have happened between us. Mm. Um, yeah, that was... And you, Trevor, what's the hardest thing you've ever had to forgive her for? Bleh. Mostly, mostly everything that's happened because I don't think I've forgiven because I, I, still some things make me angry. And uh, it's not it's not by any fault of hers or lack of apologizing on her part. I just, I don't know how to cope with forgiving somebody. Maybe I forgive, but I can't forget. And then when I remember it, it I get angry all over again. And then I have to sit down and breathe. Are, are you struggling to forgive her for things that you did? Wow, what? <laughs> how? <laughs> Wait, don't do that. Don't do that to me. How? <laughs> No, what do you mean? Let's say you break this vase, ne? Yeah. and she forgives you. And then she breaks that vase, and you don't forgive her. Yes. So are you struggling yes. to forgive her for yeah, things well, that, that you have done? Yes, thank you. That's oh. the great, best way to put it without being that guy. Yeah. <laughs> just cause it's no, because there's kids involved, so I'm not just going to come thank out and say you. it like that. <laughs> thank no, you. Uh, are you making that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that is the, the man side of you. That like, oh, absolutely. That, that like I, I'm a man, so you don't do absolutely. that to me. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You hit the nail on the head with that one. I, because of this manhood yeah. thing, yeah. Uh, my ego is uh, the most damaged yeah. thing. Yeah. And we are slowly rebuilding Ooh, a, a, slow. a, a healthy ego. Slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ego's a problem for guys. 
I don't think any guy can say when his ego's bruised, he's fine. Mm. You know. Okay. So the divorce tour, whose idea was it? <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> So wait, he calls you up, he's like, hey, yo, ex. <laughs> and you go, hey, ex. <laughs> I've got this idea, <laughs> right? Like I'm going to go on tour and I'm going to speak about our divorce. Yay or nay, you can have a cut of the proceedings. Yay. Yeah. I'm here for the money. <laughs> <laughs> My girl. <laughs> Yay. So you I mean, he was going to do, if, if I didn't get on the back, plus I'm, I was managing, we, like, I manage him. So we, we do business. So whether he did it on his own, uh, or decided that he was going to go to 101 different pubs or whatever. Yeah. He, because it's something that's within him and it's something that he's feeling and something that he's going through, yeah. he would obviously project that in his comedy. Uh, so why not I be part of it and we do it together in a constructive manner mm. that works for our family? Do you ever come on stage or is that a surprise? Surprise, surprise, come to the show. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I saw the, the, the flyers, like... You know, then there's goals, and then there's you, and then there's Trevor. I'm like, guys, there was makeup here, and there was a yeah. photographer. So yes. I, but was I, like, I was never biased, though, when, when, I, when I posted it. But did Trevor, did you just copy and paste your wife, your ex, <laughs> onto? Yeah. Yeah, no, I was like, no. No, it was a, a photo shoot. It was a photo shoot. Yep. And you guys are in it, and you're happy about it, and you're not going to drink too much one night and end up getting back together on this tour. Right. No. <laughs> right, no. <laughs> no, I think we... I don't I think, drink that much. I, we show yes. Trip. <laughs> no, I think for us, we had, a, we had a place where we know that there's, you know, there's no turning back when, mm. from the marriage point of view, um, you know. It's, I think the shocker to everybody else is that, you know, uh, we had people comment and say, oh, but it's too soon. And we're like, too soon for who? For who? Because we truth of the matter is, I mean, Trevor and I have actually not been living together for over 18 months. We've mm. like, this, this has been a process for us. Mm. So we've gotten to a point now where we are like, okay, we're moving on to the next. Yeah, I live in the deep next. now. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> On to the next, which is, you know, the show. And it's part, and that's also part of his healing. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. part of his healing. So, you know, and I'm, I've always supported him and we've always maintained that and made our kids aware that no matter what, we will always be a family. We'll always support each other. And that's what we're doing. Fourth of November, Silver Star Casino, yeah? Yep. Tickets at Compu Tickets, 185 rounds. Yes. There you heard it. This oh. Saturday. Let's all go. Fourth of Come. November. Yeah. Solo Star Casino, copy ticket. There you have it straight from Lucille and Trevor's mouth. Now you can't go around making up rumors. They told you what happened. They told you what's going on. And you can go and make the circle full by checking out Trevor's show. Uh, Trevor shall be dismissed. Now after the break, Lucille and I are going to have a little girl catch up, yo. Uh, don't forget, we're still taking your WhatsApp voice notes throughout the show, so keep them coming. Stay with us. And welcome back to Real Talk, right here on SABC3. The stage is yours. Long before the fame came, Lucille Gumbi was an ambitious businesswoman who transitioned from caterer to event manager as well as artist manager. That ambition and focus continues to be the driving force behind her success, where these days she serves as the director of Gumbi Productions, darling, which has been responsible for the likes of the 2016 SABC3 series Sober Companion. Yeah. Now, when you were watching Sober Companion, were like flashes of your life coming at you there like, it was, because Trevor was one of the main writers along with Tiffany Rabuzano, and a lot of the storyline was from our life. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, a lot of it, you sit there and you cringe and you're like, and sometimes Jamie and Jody are watching, and we're like, mm. And then this one, <laughs> I want to ask you, how much of them do you allow them to see of, like, your guys' very public life, and how much do you shelter them? You try, but nowadays, with social media and they read, they old, yeah. <laughs> you know, you try and it's just, it's impossible to totally, mm. you know, uh, shatter them from seeing things, you know, because I mean, there was one time when Jamie got a, somebody sent him a message on Instagram, like of something that's related to, <laughs> to me and Trevor, you know, so th things like that. And I mean, he's at an age where, you know, a lot of parents, they are, you know, too young for Instagram and, but he's at an age where almost all his friends are on yeah. social media. So, I mean, the times have changed. It's just, it's a lot difficult, but it's about communicating with them and talking them through things when mm. things happen, you know, and making them know your side, uh, you know, as, mm. as the family and where we at and how we dealing with it and it's communication. What's the toughest question they've ever asked you? 
toughest question. My kids don't ask tough, tough questions, really, actually. That's why we sent them to therapy, because we also felt like they're not saying much, you know, uh, they're not saying anything. Uh, and they went to therapy and they said stuff. So it was just a case of not being able to say it to mom and dad, uh, uh, you know. But a lot of, the, like, the other day, uh, you know, I was busy with uh, divorce paper stuff, and Jamie was like, so you guys are still married? You, <laughs> like, like, seriously? Like, okay. I, I, I was wondering why you're still using Goombi. Uh, and I was like, Are you child, keeping Goombi, by the way? Um, not, no. What's, what's the other one? Let's launch Slaffa. it now. Slaffa. Slaffa. Lucille Slaffa. Slaffa. <laughs> yes. Lucille Slaffa, darling. Coming your way, yes. Sounds like a Playboy <laughs> pinup. Oh, Any girl like that? that? <laughs> Lucille Slaffa. The yes. vamp. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, and um, do you know what? I, for me, and I remember saying this to my friends, when you started losing the weight, I said, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I remember, I was like, oh, man. Something is happening here. There's a change about to come, and That's it's going to be out of there. <laughs> wow. No, but that actually happened uh, years, well, about yeah, four years now yeah. that I've been trying to lose weight. That was before our marriage took uh, the dive that it did. Yeah. But, um, you know, that was more of a, a case of me not being happy with myself. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't even anything that, you know, Tiva did. I just didn't feel comfortable yeah. in myself. But the process of me lo losing weight helped me discover a whole lot more things about myself. So I can safely say that it did start there. And then as time went Girl, on. Girl, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, you Girl, know. Girl, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh, the journey of discovery. It, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. And I mean, it, I think every woman goes through it. You evolve as yeah. a person, you discover new things and some things you want to continue with, other things not so much. So you were always beautiful, but then you lost the weight, so you were beautiful and sexy. Was it difficult for Trevor to watch other men look at you? I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think so. Um, mm. You know, there was a lot of, you know, times when it's like, why are you dressed like this? Why are you, you know, mm. why are you posting? Like, I'm well, not posting so much, but it was like, okay, you could tell. Trevor's not a person who would come up and outwardly say, you know, I'm jealous or do things mm. in, that, in that manner, but he'd drop the odd hint here and there, but, mm. but it wasn't that hectic. Uh, are you ready to see him date and perhaps marry someone else? I think I am, yes. Are you going to be modern family about it? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be like, girl, come over for no. dinner. <laughs> Let's, no, no. We're raising kids together. No, no, no. I don't know. I think maybe in time, yes, we'll get to that point because whoever's going to be in his life is going to be my kid's life. Yes. Like, that's just a given. Yes. And Have you I'm discussed going to that, be... though? Like, what... What process that's going to be like? Like, how soon before you meet the kids? And, you know, are, know, are they allowed to discipline the kids? We haven't actually had a formal discussion about it. But nothing, I mean, in the time that we have been apart, um, you know, there's been other people, um, you know, that kind of thing. But okay. we've not had issues that we've really needed to bring it to the table, okay. you know. So right now it's just transitioning and things are happening. But until something, you know, there's a need. Yeah. For now it's... it's I don't think it's necessary, really. And on his side, do you think he's ready to see you date somebody else and, like, marry someone else? No. He's not, ne? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That was quick, painless, and honest. All right, I'll take it. And are, are you taking half of everything? <laughs> well, we were married in community of property, so we're just following that process. So. so you're, like, literally splitting everything down the line. That's how it goes. And he went to his own... Uh, count, he says your marriage counselor was useless, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then he went to his own guy. Yes. Did you go to your own guy? No, I continued with her for a while. Okay. Uh, we had no issues. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's right. But she was a bit biased. We had no issues. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I continued with her. Um, he went to somebody else and for different reasons. So, yeah. What's the most refreshing thing you learned about yourself from counseling? Being able to stand up for myself and um, being able to stick to things that, that, I, that I want for myself. Mm. Because a lot of the time, um, you know, generally, not even just in my marriage as a person, I, a lot of the time, I'm a people pleaser. Uh, yeah. So a, a lot of the time I found myself doing things and, I mean, even in my marriage, doing things just to keep the peace and to keep everybody mm. singing Kumbaya together mm. and... and but, uh, you know, in that process, I learned to be able to say, no, I'm not. This is what I want. This is what's going to make me happy. Moving along swiftly, it's about me. 
you know. So I did that, and I'm still learning how to do it better in my in my life as a whole. Mm. But I think the journey of our breakdown in our marriage helped me to identify that about myself mm -hmm. and take steps to fix that. Mm. Yeah. What a blessing you are. Thank you so much for sharing your story because I think My so pleasure. many women like, need to see an example of it. You know, they yeah. know it's possible and they hear through someone, you know, they were fine, they got divorced and they're fine. And, you know, I, I, I think it's nice that we can feel, see, yeah. touched like somebody who's doing it and doing it for themselves. Yes. So, Lucille Gumby, thank you thank for your you time. Thank you very much for having us. Woo! Oh, a very big thank you to our guests, Trevor and Lucille Gumbi, or Lucille Slapper. Uh, the Divorce Tour kicks off on the 4th of November at Silver Star Casino. Uh, you'll easily get all the information from their social media pages, so go check it out. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Now, our obsession with celebrities is sometimes used as an escape from our own problems as we watch them battle through their own uh, in the limelight. But the fact of the matter is, when it comes to life's challenges such as divorce, celebrities are no different to us. Maybe your marriage is currently hanging in the balance, or perhaps you've just entered the first stages of the divorce proceedings and you're feeling a bit lost. This is why we have Louise Bolton, who's a clinical psychologist. She's joining us now to help us all better understand the psychological minefield that is divorce. Now, every time people get divorced around you, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's always, they always look fine, and then there's mm -hmm. like a period where they find like three months, six months, and then it all goes haywire. Is mm -hmm. this something that you warn people towards, like, you're not fine? You're not really fine. Yeah, it's just like when a person dies, uh -huh. one also tends to go through those stages of grief, uh -huh. which would initially be denial. So this is not happening. That is why you don't see it on them. This is not really happening. Uh -huh. And after denial, you tend to get the anger stage. Then I'm livid at you for what you've done to me. How dare you leave me? Or how dare you, you do things to me that makes me leave you? Uh -huh. And then people tend to go to bargaining. Maybe we can make this work. Because people tend to want to go back to familiarity, even though it might not have been good. Mm -hmm. After bargaining, you get depression. It does not always go you know, exactly like that. It can overlap a bit. When you get the depression stage, people need to be careful of substance use, uh. sleeping too much, um, engaging in all kinds of things to try and get away from how they're feeling. Things that numb the pain. Things that numb the pain. Uh. Yes, then you'd rather want to see your therapist or go out with your friends or you know, find good outlets, positive ways in which you can deal with what you're going through. Uh. And then eventually people do get to acceptance, but it's a journey. Uh. Let's take it back to when the, 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 that starts. If my partner comes to me and we're married and he says, Anila, I want a divorce. What, like, <laughs> what, what should I immediately do? Should I be like, no, like beg them to stay? Like, what is the healthy thing to do? The healthy thing to do. The thing that a person needs to keep in mind is the person that raises the whole idea of, I want a divorce, has probably been sitting with those thoughts for a very long time. Uh. They've been processing it, kind of deciding, is this what I want? Is this not what I want? How would it work if I do it? So by the time you hear it, they've gone through this process. They're in a different place. And for you, it will be a shock. Mm. So it will be acute pain right in that very moment. And you might feel like begging. You might feel like getting angry and fighting. Uh, there will be all of these emotions going through you, mm. but they won't be ideal in that very moment. Because if a person has decided to go, you don't really want to try and convince them to stay. Because mm. mm. the hospital situation then. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, what happens is often people actually convince their partner, let's give this a shot. We can, uh -huh. yeah, let's go see someone. You know, that's where the marriage counselor comes and that does not refund you. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because this one person has already decided, I don't want to be here. Uh. Um, so they go kind of through it in a ritualistic way uh. to appease the other person and so that both people can feel like, okay, we gave this a shot. Uh. Yeah. But there are some exceptions mm. to the rule, right? Absolutely. Where things are like breaking down and they're eroding and one wants a divorce and then we're like, no, let's give it a try. And then it's almost like a, like a, a full turnabout, like it's a new, not even a new chapter, it's a new book. Mm. How do I see that I am not the exception to the rule and that my marriage is over? Okay. So 
when a couple comes to see me, for instance, yeah. before I actually launch, in, launch into a process of marital counseling, I will take them through a process to establish whether they should be working at the marriage, yes, or whether they should actually go their separate ways. Okay. To try and get them on the same page, you need to know that your partner is as invested and devoted to the process as you are. It can't work if only one person wants to change the world, change mm. everything, make the other person happy. They're so motivated towards the process and the other person is just kind of going along with it. So you establish that up front mm. because it's just unnecessary pain to tell your partner, for instance, that you're really into this and create hope that there's going to be a process. But of course, it's not always like that. Mm. Sometimes in a counseling process, you discover the opposite. People start listening to each other. They just learn the correct techniques to really understand what the other person's needs are mm. and to start focusing on what the other person needs and not to be so self-focused. You know, that's what people do. You're treating me like this. It's me. It's me. me. Yeah. You did this to me. You did this I to me. I feel like this. I am yeah. so angry and you need to change A, B, C and D. Instead of looking at what is it that you need? Am I listening to what your needs are? And can I adapt to that? Am I still willing to do that? Or is the resentment too big and I, don't, and I no longer want to go there? Okay, Louise, before we close, I want to ask you a very vital question because now we're talking about divorce and when the marriage is ending. Mm. In your professional opinion, should married couples be going to therapy anyway, even if nothing is wrong? I think it could make such a difference, okay. especially in terms of learning how to understand each other. People often speak a different language, you know, in terms of their personalities, mm. how they express themselves to each other. And because of that, there's miscommunication and it's not intentional. And if you can learn to understand the other person's language, there's a lot more empathy. With empathy, people criticize each other less. Mm. There's more compassion for each other and less contempt. You don't want to be spoken to like with, in a disrespectful mm. way because mm. I have empathy for you. I understand why you're saying what you're saying, even though it might not be my personality style or my language. Oh, thank you for your time. I think you've shone a, shone a light in some very dark areas in the country. Uh, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much to our guests, Trevor and Lucille Gumbi, as well as clinical psychologist Louise Bolton. No relation to Michael Bolton, I asked her. Tomorrow, we're in the presence of the music maestro, whose big voice has cemented her as one of South Africa's most recognized talents. She'll be alongside the custodian of traditional music with the ability to master almost any indigenous instrument. Simpua Dana and Pops Muhammad will be here. Real talk on ACBC3. So make sure that you are too. Goodbye.